Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be taking another look at the Nintendo DS. Now the last time we took a look at this console on this channel was back in this video right here where we took a look at a homebrew application called Nintendo's XP. And although it was pretty cool, it was merely a Windows XP simulator for the Nintendo DS with an interface and applications that mimicked what you would find on XP. This time around though, we're gonna be upping the ante and installing not one, but three real copies of Windows on this Nintendo DS, Windows 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0. Now, as you can probably guess, this is accomplished through the use of yet another homebrew application called DSX86. But before we get into all of that, I want to give a huge thank you to the fine folks over at Linode for sponsoring today's episode and for giving all of you guys watching right now, yeah, you, everybody, a great offer to get started on their platform. If you like like servers and free stuff, stay tuned to the end of the video for more information. For now though, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now, the very first thing we have to do is gather all of our necessary files, and there are many of them. Not only the DSX86 file itself, but also all the Windows files and a couple of additional things that we're going to need. I'm going to have all the links down below, and I should say that even though this is not going to be a tutorial video, because the main focus is actually installing Windows 1, 2, and 3 on a DS using the simulator. But this first segment here is going to be kind of tutorial-ish because I'm going to be showing you what you need and where to put all the files and how to get everything up and running. And not only is this going to be installing Windows 1, 2, and 3, we're going to be kind of doing a mini Windows upgrade saga here because I thought that would be really appropriate considering that we've done videos like that before. Upgrading from Windows 1 to Windows 7 on the 98 PC, upgrading through Whistler builds, upgrading through Longhorn builds. You guys probably know the drill by now. So we're going to be trying to upgrade from Windows 1.0 to Windows 2.03, and then from 2.03 to 3.0 on the DS. So I do want to point out a couple of things here on the DSX86 website. So when you go to it, it's going to, first of all, tell you what it is, right? But then it's going to say, what hardware does it emulate? Now, there's two separate versions here of DSX86. You've got DSX86 and DS2X86. Now, the primary difference between these two is that DSX86 emulates a 286 processor and DS2X86 emulates a 386 processor. So you might think, okay, well, I'm just going to get DS2X86 because it emulates a 386 processor. But unless you have a specific flash cart, a SuperCard DS2 flash card, you're not going to be able to get this version. So in my case, I'm using an R4 Revolution, and if you're in that boat as well, you can only get DSX86, so you're stuck on the 286 processor, which is totally fine for our purposes in this video. And since we're going to be running this on an original Nintendo DS, or well, a DS Lite, but it's still not a DSi, we are limited to a 10 megahertz clock speed, unlike the 20 megahertz we would get running under a Nintendo DSi. So just wanted to point that out there. You also got the rest of the hardware that it emulates here on the main page. When you're ready to download, you want to go to the downloads page and it might look like you've got a ton of files to go through here and it could be a little bit overwhelming, but you only need three things from this page. That's going to be either DSX86 or DS2X86, depending on what flash cart you have the INI file right here, which is the configuration document, and finally you have to get 4DOS down here. Now 4DOS is required because DSX86 itself does not come included with a command interpreter. So you have to download one yourself, and the only one currently supported is 4DOS version 7.50, which you can download from this link right here, or by going to 4DOS.info and downloading it through this link here. They're the same link, but you know, you've got two different ways of getting it. Uh, you can also go through this FTP server, but, well, you can't because the FTP server appears to not exist anymore because I tried to FTP into it and it just kept timing out over and over again. So those are the three initial files that you need, and now we're going to copy them over to our SD card, or in my case, I'm going to show you where to put them on your SD card. The first thing you want to do is go into the games folder that the R4 card will create for you, and this is where you want to drop all of your NDS files. So you see I've got Windows. Nintendo's XP in here. Here's DSX86. The .sav file will come when you first run it. That's, you know, it's 
it's save information and all of that. Uh, the next thing you want to do is go back to the root of the card and create a data folder. And in this folder, you want to create a DSX86 folder. So this is where you want to put the .ini file. Now you can modify it if you want to, just to show you what it looks like. We can just see the file itself here on the website. And this is what the INI file by default looks like. So you can modify some of these settings if you want, but the standard configuration settings work just fine for our purposes here. Next thing we're gonna do is create a 4DOS folder inside the DSX86 folder. And this is where we have to go to our downloaded executable right here. Now, even though this is an executable, we can still access the files inside of it on OS X here, or Mac OS, I should say, because this is a Windows self-extracting executable. So all we have to do on OS X here is open up Terminal, and we're going to navigate to our uh, folder here, and we're going to run unzip here, and we're going to type out the executable name and press return and it will extract all those files just like that the only thing we need the bare minimum that we need to get the command interpreter working on the ds is 4dos.com because this is the command interpreter itself all these other files are optional you can copy them over if you want but you don't have to so i only have 4dos.com inside of the 4dos folder and that's all you need to get the emulator itself working. The next thing you have to do is download the Windows files. Now, if we go back to the DSX86 website for a moment here, there's this compatibility wiki link, and that takes you to this page right here. And this is a very useful page that gives you a list of every application that was tested on DSX86 and whether or not it is playable, partially working, or not working. And you can see they have tested uh, Windows 1.0 right here. Here's Windows 1.01. It's playable. Windows 2.03 is playable and Windows 3.0a is playable. Pretty great, right? So that's why I selected these three versions because theoretically we should have no problems getting them up and running. But of course, this is an MJD video, so something could always go wrong. But in theory, they should run just fine. Now, like with a lot of things, there is an easier way of doing this and there's a more challenging, maybe not challenging, but just more time consuming way. And I'm sure you can guess the route we're gonna go. Uh, the easier way is just clicking on, for example, and you don't have to get it from here, you can also get it from another source, but uh, they actually have a pre-installed copy of Windows 3.0a already installed, set up and ready to go that you can download from this link right here. So you just go here, download, and then download. So you can download this and just copy the contents to the SD card, boot into DOS, type win, and you'll be booted into Windows 3.0. But that does not help us with what we're trying to do here. So what we have to do is get the original installation diskettes, extract the contents of them to a folder, and then copy that folder to the SD card. So I've got a Windows 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0 folder right here, and we're just going to copy all of them, or select all of them rather, and then drag them to DSX86, and we'll copy them to the SD card. Now, uh, you have to extract the contents of the image files because if you just drag the image files onto the SD card, it will just, you know, DOS will just see the image file. You have to actually extract the contents of them to a folder to where you can just go into that folder and then run the setup executable from there. Now, macOS makes this pretty easy because you can actually just mount the IMG files natively. So if I just double click on disk1.img here, uh, it will just mount it here on my desktop. I can then open that up and then highlight all these files and then drag them to, in this case, the Win203 folder. And then when I'm done, just unmount the image. So it's really simple to do. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's really all you have to do to get everything set up. Really simple, really self-explanatory. Now comes the fun part. Let's pop this micro SD card once it finishes copying files into the R4, pop the R4 into my DS Lite and see if we can install Windows 1.0 and then upgrade the 2.03 and then finally 3.0. Let's see how simple it really is. And you can see how simple it really is to get a free $100 credit with today's video sponsor, Linode, by clicking the link down below. Yeah, I think that was a pretty good segue. Linode has sponsored a few videos on this channel before, and I'm always excited when they do because I get to talk about a service that I've personally used long before they even thought of sponsoring my channel. If you haven't heard of them, Linode provides cloud computing services that you can use for just about any 
anything. Whether it be a simple web server, game server, or even a personal VPN, if you can run it on Linux, you can run it on Linode. And you won't have to spend an arm and a leg either, because pricing starts at just $5 per month for a single core shared virtual machine with 1GB of RAM and 25GB of SSD storage. Perfect for hosting a personal blog or just having a Linux box to mess around in. Skill level isn't an issue either, thanks to Linode's user-friendly app marketplace, which makes it incredibly easy to set up your Linode for a specific purpose in no time. Or you can do everything yourself from the command line. Either way, you're not going to be locked into a specific platform or only able to host one game server, as you're given full backend access so you can tweak your server to fit your needs. And now for the best part, just click my link down below and sign up for an account and Linode will give you $100 that you can spend on any of their cloud computing services for 60 days. So be sure to check them out and huge thanks again to Linode for supporting the channel. All right, so we're all set. We've got the micro SD card in the R4, the R4 in the DS, and now we're going to tap on game here and we're just gonna press A to go into the main directory there and launch DSX86. Now, what's gonna make this, oh, actually, I went to the wrong directory, look at that, we gotta to go to games, not data. So this is the data folder again, where we've got, oh, I've got, apparently I copied it over twice, we've got Win30 in the data directory, and then in DSX86, we have Windows 1.0, Windows 2, and Windows 3. So I think that it actually, because I had done this before, I had copied these files over prior to recording this video, uh, I hadn't actually run, like, try to install it or anything, but I think that it actually interprets the data directory as the C drive. We're going to verify that here in a minute. But anyways, you want to make sure you go to the games directory, and this is where you've got all the NDS files. So we're going to launch, not DSI for DS, that's a whole different thing. We're going to launch DSX86, and there we go, loading. Now what's going to make this uh, pretty entertaining, for more so for you guys, not for me, is that, you know, we have to type in all these commands on this keyboard here on the touchscreen. There is not a physical keyboard available for the DS, at least here in the US. Uh, somebody commented on the last video, the, the Nintendo's video, and mentioned that in Japan, and I believe Europe as well, there was a, a physical keyboard released for the DS to go along with a particular game. And I found that kind of interesting. Of course, here in the US, we didn't get that for whatever reason. But anyways, so we're going to, let's just do a DIR here and we'll see where we're at. So, yep, so it's gonna interpret the root of, yeah, the root of the card actually as just the C drive. So that makes things, yeah, that makes things really easy. So we could just have copied all this stuff to the root of the card and not have to worry about any of that. So there you go. Yeah, as I was recording that clip, I was trying to think of like, what directory does it interpret as the C drive? And I thought at that point that it was the DSX86 directory, but it's actually just the root directory of the card itself. So. We're going to CD into data, and then let's see if we can just do slash, uh, actually let's go to data just so we can, we'll do a DIR again once we're here. And so it should be, oh yeah, DSX86, DSX, not C, X86, return, and then now it's going to be CD win uh, I think I called it 101 for Windows 1.01. And there we go. So theoretically, we should just be able to launch setup right here. Press return. And yep, there we go. Setup prepares Microsoft Windows to run. Now you can see it's cut off here. And that's because the scale is currently set to zoom. So with this, you can actually, I think you can actually just do this with the, uh, no, you can't do it with the D-pad here. But you just tap on these arrows here to move around. So this is how you can get to the right side of the display here. But what's easier is just to change the scale to either scale, jitter, or smooth. We're going to keep it on smooth here. Now, it doesn't show up as well, like the text and everything, because it's zoomed out. It doesn't show up as well as it does when it's zoomed here. Uh, you can see, especially on scale here, like you can barely read any of that. Uh, jitter here is, you know, a little bit better once it gets to smooth. This is the best it's going to be to have everything on screen at the same time. So we're going to just press the C key here to continue. And okay, it's going to 
create the C Windows directory, so that's great. We will uh, press return or enter. And because we have all of the floppy disk contents copied over to this folder, I already know this from doing the Windows 1.0 to Windows 7 upgrade on the 98 PC, it will not ask you for the additional disks. It'll just be able to find all the files, which is great. Uh, actually, I stand corrected. I think it was Windows 2.0 or 3.0 that doesn't ask for uh, the disks. So it is asking for the build disk. So we'll just hit C. All right, so in typical MJD fashion, it didn't take very long for something to go wrong. And in this case, it's the fact that I misremembered the fact that Windows 1.01 uh, requires you to use either, well, a floppy disk or a floppy image if uh, you can, you know, whatever DOS simulator you're using supports the mounting of image files. Now, in this case, we're out of luck because unfortunately, DSX86 does not support mounting of floppy images. As far as I can tell from everything that I've looked at on the website, in the configuration document, in the help documentation, there is nothing about mounting a floppy disk image file as the A drive to allow the system to see it as the A drive. Now, that poses a problem for Windows 1.01 here because it requires you to have the build disk contents in drive A, you cannot change it. And that's a problem in this case because we cannot use drive A at all. Now what I did in the 98 PC video is I copied the contents from the Windows 1.01 five and a quarter inch diskettes over to the three and a half inch diskettes that I had to save on, well first of all I didn't have a five and a quarter inch drive for the 98 PC, but also I was able to save in, on the amount of floppy diskettes that I physically used because I was able to fit multiple five and a quarter inch diskettes, uh, the contents of them onto the three and a half inch diskettes. And we could still go through the setup, but when I got to this prompt, I just pressed C without changing the disk in the drive because disk one, two, and I believe three were on a single high density three and a half inch floppy diskette. In this case, we're out of luck because Windows 1.0 does not allow you to change what uh, directory that it's searching for the disk files from. So you're basically out of luck if you cannot have your emulator emulate drive A in some way. And that's essentially what we have going on here because we can't change this and we can't get the emulator to mount a floppy image as drive A, which is why that I extracted the contents from the diskette images. What we could do is, like I mentioned earlier with Windows 3.0, we could just copy an already installed copy of Windows 1.01 to the DS and just go into that directory and type win. And we could boot into Windows 1.0 just fine. The compatibility wiki page confirms that. All right, so we've just restarted here. And what we're gonna do now is launch the Windows 2.03 setup and then upgrade from that to Windows 3.0. Now I know we'll be able to install Windows 2.0 just fine because unlike 1.01, even though it will ask us for the next floppy image, we can change the directory where it's searching for those files. So that means that we can type in our directory where all the files are stored and be able to continue through setup. One thing I wanna point out though, before we go any further, is this mouse option on the touch screen right here. I don't know what mouse in particular that the emulator is emulating, but you see we have this mouse option right here. This is how you turn on the mouse uh, to where I can use the D-pad to use the mouse or I can tap it again and it will swap the screens here. And this is touch mode to where I can then tap on the screen and interact with the system that way using the mouse. So we're just going to press select here to swap the screens again and just press return. So now we're in Windows 2.03 setup. So we're gonna do the same thing and change the scale to smooth here. And we're going to just press enter and we are going to install on a hard disk. So we're just gonna press H and we're gonna select C Windows as the directory. Now right here, it's asking what type of computer you have. We're going to go with the third option. So we're gonna use the down arrow key here and go down to IBM PC XT AT or 100% compatible, which is definitely what this is, right? So we'll press enter there. I mean, that is what it's emulating. Um, so we're going to, this is where VGA is an option now. Uh, yep, IBM or 100% compatible VGA, video graphics array. We're just gonna select that here. Hit the wrong key there, VGA. Boom, and we're just using a US keyboard. We're just gonna select Microsoft mouse, bus, or serial, and hopefully that will, uh, hopefully whatever mouse driver that 
DSX86 is emulating here, it'll be able to work with it. And that looks good, no change. And now it's installing files. So it's going to copy everything over to see Windows and oh no, the battery's low. And okay, so what did you notice there? It did not ask me for the next floppy diskette. It just went through the setup like I thought 3.0 did. Since all the files were in the same folder, it just detected all of them and copied everything over just fine, which is great. And it would have been great if 1.0 did that. But anyways, at least we got 2.03 installed. So we're gonna hit F for finish. And now we can just type win at the DOS prompt here, press enter, and there we go. Actually, I think there is a particular switch you have to use because you just saw it did the setup, or not the setup, but the startup screen, and then it immediately quit and just went back to DOS. So let me pull up. Works perfectly though, you must use the ver command, ver 4.00. Okay, so let's do ver. 4.00, I think this just changes the DOS version reported. And okay, now we type win. There we go, that did it. And oh my gosh, we're really zoomed in. So we're gonna change the scale to smooth here once again. And <laughs> there we go. It's actually quite difficult to see even in smooth here. This may actually uh, be best to just set it to zoom. Let's see if the mouse actually works. So we're going to mouse d-pad and oh yes it does look at that oh and that's even better okay so when you have the mouse on you can literally just move around the screen like that with the mouse that's beautiful okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to open up we're going to do the classic thing that you do when you're doing a windows upgrade uh video here is we're going to open up the control panel we're going to set some custom color options. So we're just gonna change the hue there and that will make the background like that pinkish color there you can see on the bottom. And then we're gonna select application workspace and we'll change that to like, you know, maybe bring it down to the greens here and we'll make it, all right, there we go. So we'll have the brightness like really low. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, this is definitely not the most, especially with the way that I'm set. So you can see I'm off here to the left side of the, of the camera. So this is just not really ideal to do. Um, but okay, so we've got that set. This is what window background. Okay, we'll set that. Let's bring the hue down to the greens maybe. Okay, window text. Now see, this is this is annoying, right? Where's the mouse pointer? I think it's off to the right here. Yeah, I literally can't I can't move the mouse. Like it thinks this is the edge of the screen or something. It's not it's literally not moving. For some reason, switching it into touch mode here and then setting it back to d-pad really screwed it up in terms of like where the mouse was positioned but anyways okay so window let's just do menu bar because i want this to be changed to oh my oh no don't oh my gosh what did i just do okay i think what i did is i is i just made the the window text and the window background the same color I literally can't see anything now. We're just gonna change um, as much of these as we can. I forget which option. Okay, well we can just see here. So there's, that changed the title bar. I think this one here is the text. So let's just do that. There it is. Okay, window text, perfect, perfect, okay. So now we just gotta find the, <laughs> was there a button down here? I'm just gonna look it up. Okay, there's an okay button to the left, or right underneath here to the left. So it's like right, like right across from here. It's like right here. There it is. Okay, so now we, there we go. Okay, so now we can actually see what we're doing. The fact you can even set windows like that is pretty hilarious. I did not realize you could set the, the background and the text color as the same color. Uh, so, okay, I think that's enough modifying here that we're gonna do. So we're just going to close out of this, go up to special, and we're going to end session. And that should bring us, uh, oh, we gotta hit okay here. This will end your Windows session. Okay, okay, there we go. So we're back here. So now what we're gonna do is CD up one directory, and we're gonna do CD data slash dsx86 slash win30. 
And there we go. So we do setup and there we go. So here we are launching Windows 3.0 setup. So we're going to once again just change the uh, scaling here to smooth. So we'll press enter to continue. Setup is ready to install Windows to the following directory. And there we go. Setup has found a previous version of Windows on your hard disk. If you want, Setup can upgrade your old Windows installation. Yes, we absolutely want to do that. So we'll hit enter. And oh, actually, you know what? I think it did mention this. Did I screw up and not do something right? I think you have to run. Oh, you know what I had to do? I just had to wait. Uh, I was looking at the wrong thing on the wiki page. It'll say there's a black screen. If you wait a while, the installer returns to normal. All right, so a couple things have happened since the last clip. As you can see, the good news is we've continued on with the setup. We had a bit of an interesting thing happen. So I was able to advance to the next screen in the setup process, but there were some black lines on the top screen here. So I couldn't see what it was actually doing. But uh, the hard disk indicator light was blinking, indicating that it was copying files. And then we got here and you can see that we have our color scheme set that we set back in Windows 2.03. So we're just going to, let's see what it's asking us to do here. Setup or after setup installs Windows 3.0, it will perform each of the following actions. Okay, we don't want to set up printers because we don't have any printers and we don't want to read online documents. We do want to set up applications already on the computer or on your hard disk. So we'll hit continue here. There we go, copying files. And it's building the program groups. And yes, we're gonna make all modifications. We'll have, we'll have setup do that for us. Setup applications. Okay, so this is where it allows us to copy existing applications. So we should see CVT paint, which is convert paint and the regular paint application from 2.0. So we're going to just add all right here. And we will hit OK. And it's going to finish building the program groups. And oh, we got that error again down here. But the good news is, even if we have to restart, it has finished copying all the files. So theoretically, we should just be able to boot into DOS, type win. All right, and there we go. We're back to DOS here. So we are just going to type CD, if I can spell that right. CD. And we're going to go to Windows. Uh, and can we just do tab here and have it auto populate? Yes, we can. Oh my gosh, I've been doing that from the beginning. Okay, so we're going to type win slash r, hit enter. And oh, we have to change the DOS version. That's right. All right, so we got to type ver 4.00. Actually, we could just do five. Let's just do 5.0. Okay, there we go, DOS 5.0, so if we type ver, it should display that, there we go. Okay, so it gives us the, what is this, Microsoft Network, uh, an error message here, let's change the mouse to D-pad here. Uh, network software has not been installed, network options will not be enabled, okay, that's fine, fine with me. And there's the program manager. So, I mean, here it is, guys. Here is Windows 3.0 running on my Nintendo DS Lite, which, by the way, has been on low battery this entire time, and it's still uh, chugging along here, which is great. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited that we got this working finally. So let's go to help here and go to about program manager, review that about information. Uh, if I can actually hit the right button. There it is, 3.0a. And we're going to do, you know what we're going to do? We're going to play some solitaire. Actually, we're going to do a couple of things. <laughs> let's, uh, first off, let's change the uh, zoom here to, yeah, that. And then we'll change this. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's going to be, that's going to be quite difficult to see. I don't think you can tap to click. I think you just got to set the mouse over what you want. And then you just, yeah, you just click with the A button. And so there it's opening up File Manager. So let's go ahead and play some Reversi. Can you believe it? Reversi, we're gonna play it on the DS here. Uh, so, okay, I am red. So we're gonna let's see if we can beat the computer here. <laughs> I lost by 38. Oh yeah, what a surprise. Look, 
<laughs> yeah, the computer totally destroyed me there. But anyway, so there's... <laughs> if you ever wanted to play Windows Reversi on your DS, well, here's a great way to do it. So we'll close out of that. And let's play some Solitaire. Oh, this will be... Oh my gosh, I don't even know how I'm going to be able to finish a whole game. This is going to be, like, just so unbearable because of having to move around. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so the DS battery hasn't died yet, but my camera battery did, and unfortunately I don't have a backup battery on hand at the moment. Luckily I do have my phone, I've switched over to that and kind of set it up in an impromptu way here. And you can see I was able to clear the board here, and we're going to make the final move, moving the King of Diamonds up here, and... Boom, there we go, and we get the nice card falling animation, isn't that amazing? Oh my gosh, that's just, that's hilarious to see here on the Nintendo DS. We can like move this down here and to where we just see the uh, card itself or the, the table here itself. And yeah, there we go. It's, uh, it's going pretty slowly here, but it is going. And yeah, there you have it. So I played Reversi and Solitaire here on Windows 3.0. On the Nintendo DS. Deal again? We're going to say no. We're not going to deal again. Because I think that is a great stopping point for today's video. There you have it, guys. That is Windows 2.0. Unfortunately, again, 1.0 didn't work. But at least we got 2.0 and 3.0 working here on the Nintendo DS using DSX86. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode, if you want to see more like it, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed down below, all that good stuff. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching. Thank you to Linode once again for sponsoring, and I will see you all in the next video.